Hello and welcome to a short presentation on premature sexual maturation, also known as PSM. My name is Sally Majid and I'm Growth Nurse Specialist here at the Child Growth Foundation. So within this presentation, we'll be looking at what PSM is and the hormones involved. We'll be describing possible causes of PSM and then puberty, what normal puberty might look like and within that the TANA stages of development. We'll look at how a diagnosis is made and what possible investigations might be done. And then also the treatment options. And then finally, support that is available should your child be going through premature sexual maturation. So what is premature sexual maturation? It's about puberty and puberty is the process of maturing that occurs in adolescence and includes the development of secondary sexual characteristics. It's also a period of accelerated growth and rapid bone maturation. Uh, PSM can also be called precocious puberty. It essentially means that puberty starts earlier than expected. For girls, that means before the age of eight and for boys before the age of nine. The changes that puberty brings are challenging, even when they come at the expected age. They may be overwhelming when they happen to a child too early, and that's why it's important to know the difference between signs of regular puberty and early puberty. In certain rare cases, these uh, signs may also indicate the presence of an underlying condition. So it's important to see a doctor if you are concerned that your child is showing signs of puberty earlier than expected. And it is more common in girls than boys. There's a lot of terminology that you might hear me say um, and also might read elsewhere. So I'll just explain what these mean. Um, secondary sexual characteristics are any physical um, signs that develop at puberty that are not directly involved in reproduction. Pubarchy is the development of pubic hair. Adrenarchy is also pubic hair, but also includes body odour, acne or oily skin. And um, velarchy is breast development and menarchy is the commencement of periods, menstruation. So what hormones are involved in puberty? Um, the adolescent growth spur is the most rapid period of growth after the neonatal period, and it's dependent on both growth hormone and sex hormone secretion. The hormonal changes at puberty start very gradually until they reach a certain threshold that the development of sexual characteristics is stimulated, and that means that puberty has started. And there are a number of hormones that directly affect puberty. The most important control mechanism that regulates puberty and fertility is gonadotropin releasing hormone, GnRH, and that's released from the hypothalamus in the brain. GnRH stimulates the pituitary gland to produce LH and FSH, that's luteinizing hormone and follicle stimulating hormone. LH um, controls the production of testosterone in boys and triggers ovulation in girls. Um, FSH controls sperm production in boys and in girls starts the ova, the eggs, maturing. Both, both um, LH and FSH help control the menstrual cycle in girls. Uh, other important hormones are testosterone, which is produced in the testes and controls male sexual development. It helps control sperm growth and function. Progesterone and estrogen produced in the ovaries acts with LH and FSH to control monthly cycles, with estrogen also controlling female sexual development. Androgens produced in the adrenal glands, which sit on top of the kidneys, um, stimulate hair growth in boys and girls and trigger the voice changes experienced by boys in adolescence. So possible causes of premature sexual maturation. The most important point to remember is that the majority of cases of PSM have no known cause and only very rarely can some other conditions or illnesses cause it to happen. Um, early puberty can be put into two different categories gonadotropin dependent precocious puberty and that is the early secretion of gonadotropin releasing hormone um, it can be also known as gdpp true or central precocious puberty they all mean the same um, in this type of psm there's been a premature activation of the hypothalamic pituitary gonadal axis no cause for this to happen is found in the majority of cases but assessment for other possible conditions or illnesses should be investigated. 
um, gonadotropin independent pro precocious puberty, and that might also be known as GIPP, false, pseudo or peripheral precocious puberty. Uh, this type is less common and the specific causes are rare, but they might include um, certain conditions such as congenital adrenal hyperplasia or McCune Albright syndrome and certain types of tumours. In this type of PSM, the appearance of the secondary sexual characteristics are due to the increased production of female and male hormones rather than that early activation of the um, hypothalamic pituitary gonadal axis. PSM has consequences that may impact a child both physically and psychologically. And once a child's body begins to release sex and growth hormones, PSM may not be able to be reversed, but if treatment is appropriate, then it can help stop the progression of puberty. With PSM, um, a child may have one or more early growth spurts, but the end result is that a child could end up shorter as an adult than he or she might otherwise have been. The reason is that growth hormones prematurely stimulate bone growth and shorten the normal amount of time for a child's height to increase. So what happens in puberty? Not every child reaches puberty at the same time. Um, it typically begins between age 8 and 13 in girls and between ages 40, 9 and 14 in boys. The average age for girls to start puberty is 11, while for boys, the average is 12. Um, and the process can take up to four years. But remember, it can be different for everyone and it's completely normal for puberty to start at any point between ages eight to 13 for girls and nine to 14 for boys. Um, this diagram shows what changes occur during puberty. Um, the shared changes are in the green boxes and the girl specific ones in the red and boy specific ones in grey. Usually the first sign of puberty starting for girls are breast bud development and pubic hair. They may also notice more hair growing on their arms and legs and then after a year or so the breasts become fuller and then a year after that they may have their first period. Uh, pubic hair will then possibly become coarser and curlier. They might notice underarm hair growth and they may become a little bit more sweaty. They could notice skin changes and report a, a, a white vaginal discharge. Um, height will increase and their body shape may change with hips becoming wider and the waist becoming narrower. For boys, the first sign of puberty might be that the testicles become bigger. Um, the scrotum will begin to thin and redden and pubic hair will start to appear. After a year or so, the penis and testicles will get bigger and the scrotum will be continue to get darkened in colour. Um, pubic hair may become thicker and curlier and they might notice underarm hair and they might become sweatier as well. Um, occasionally, the breast can sometimes swell in boys, but just temporarily. Boys might also have involuntary ejaculations of semen when asleep and have wet dreams. Uh, their voice may break until it eventually becomes permanently deeper. Um, skin changes such as acne might occur and there'll be an increase in height and their body shape may change and that they may become more muscular. So this is Tanner's stages of development. Um, the normal ranges and sequence of puberty are outlined here. It was published by a British paediatrician, Professor James Tanner in 1969, and it's considered as the standard measurement for assessing pubertal status. And it'll be used by medical practitioners when ass assessing children um, for which stage they are at in puberty. So possible investigations and making a diagnosis. Um, Puberty can be hard for children and families to talk about, particularly if evidence of puberty has been noticed at a younger age than anticipated. The first port of call is usually the GP, who should ask sensitively about the changes that have been happening and when they started. It's important for the doctors assessing for PSM, premature sexual maturation, to know how rapidly the physical changes have occurred and also to be aware of any other symptoms or health concerns that the child is experiencing. 
A growth spurt is an important indication of puberty. So it's key to chart heights over time on a growth chart. Um, a single measurement may suggest average height in a child who had previously been on a lower centile for height. The child's mid-parental height centile should also be um, plotted and that can be compared with the child's current actual height centile. The mid-parental height is a child's estimated or predicted um, adult height based on the heights of their parents. The physical exam for secondary sexual characteristics may feel invasive and embarrassing for the child, so it should be carried out um, supportively and very sensitively. Um, the Tanner stages of development, which I explained, will be used by the doctor to identify which stage of development the child is at. For girls, it'll include a breast examination, and for boys, the testes and penis development will be assessed. And um, the doctor will look at the presence of pubic hair in both boys and girls. If PSM is suspected, then the GP should refer the child to a paediatrician or paediatric endocrinologist, um, and further investigations may be carried out to make a diagnosis. Um, blood tests should be taken to look at hormone levels. Um, a bone age, which is an x-ray of the hand and wrist to determine whether the bones are measuring older than the actual age of the child um, is important because that's an indicator that the bones are growing quicker than expected. Um, a pelvic ultrasound scan can assess uterine development and identify any underlying cause of PSM. An MRI brain scan to exclude any abnormality to the central nervous system as a cause might be done. The GnRH stimulation test, which is that gonadotrophin releasing hormone, um, might be done to show if the cause is gonadotropin dependent or independent. Um, a diagnosis of premature sexual maturation is usually based on a combination um, of the following that I've listed in the diagnosis. Um, it's the Tanner staging identified on the assessment, the evidence of rapid growth, the bone age assessment and the results from the stimulation test and scans taken. So possible treatment options. There are varying degrees of PSM, some that require um, assessment and monitoring and some that after a full assessment and discussion and agreement with families could result in treatment to suppress hormones and delay puberty until the child is a more appropriate age. So there might be a period of observation of child's pubertal development before any decision regarding hormone suppression treatment is made. Um, early puberty is treated by treating the underlying cause, if there's an underlying cause, or the hormone suppression treatment, which is the gonadotropin releasing hormone analog, which is a manufactured hormone and it's given as an injection ranging from either every three to four weeks or every 10 to 12 weeks. Um, gonadotropin independent precocious puberty may be treated with oral medication to suppress hormones. Um, growth hormone treatment might be considered if the child has a low final height prediction. All options um, for treatment should be discussed with a healthcare professional with the main aim of treatment being to pause sexual development until the child reaches the expected age for puberty to start. Um, treatment with medication is usually only recommended if it's thought early, pubertal, pu early puberty will cause emotional or physical problems such as a very short stature or early periods in girls which may cause significant distress. So support that might be needed for premature sexual maturation. Um, I've listed some of the potential issues that might require support. There's a psychosocial impact of early puberty, as children might feel self-conscious and embarrassed about looking and feeling different to their peers. There's a practical and social implications of managing periods at a young age, as well as um, experiencing discomfort. Boys might experience erections at inappropriate times and have nighttime ejaculations from wet dreams that may embarrass or worry them. Both boys and girls may have negative feelings and be uncomfortable about their changing body. 
there might be anxiety at medical appointments and um, the examinations can invade a child's personal space. So careful measures need to be taken to minimise um, a child's discomfort and distress at um, any appointment. Because the child might be taller and more developed than their peers, people may assume that they are older and have higher expectations of them that could result in unrealistic assumptions being made about the child's ability and behaviour. In addition to mood changes related to hormones, um, early puberty has been associated with behavioural challenges in boys and girls, and so there needs to be careful um, assessment and management of any challenging behaviour that might present itself. There is support available, um, possibly through your paediatric endocrinologist who might have an endocrine nurse specialist working with them. If appropriate, a, a clinical child psychologist can um, help you with any issues. Um, it might be important to engage with the child's school so they are aware of what's happening and they can ensure that they support the child and put measures in place to minimise the impact um, that early puberty might have on the child's school life. And it's important for parents to have open discussions with their child about the changes that the child's experiencing um, and explain to them that it is something that will happen to all of their friends, but at a later age. And there might be some certain book, there are some books available and resources to help with those difficult conversations, as well as um, professionals that I've listed here. And of course, if you want to contact us at the Child Growth Foundation, if you have any questions and would like support and guidance around premature sexual maturation, please give us a call.